Hey internet, it's Mike with Mike Jones Knife and Tool and uh, today I'm going to show you how I take a knife from this state to here. Stay with me. Uh, I've been lately, all my videos have just been like uh, update videos, videos on things that I have have done and uh, I haven't in a while made a video of actually doing anything so today I got some time in the shed and I uh, figured I'd actually do something. So I've got a couple little knives here. These ones, these ones have been extremely popular since I, I finished the first two. This one's a little different. Um, it's just got a uh, straighter edge on it instead of the big belly. And uh, it's actually chisel ground, which that means is on the bevel, this side of the blade is ground and the other side is flat. I don't know if you can kind of make that out, but uh, for some reason, I thought, why not do a chisel grind? I hadn't done one before, so I thought, here we go. So another stainless um, little neck knife. We'll uh, pick out some sort of neat handle material for that, not just uh, not just an oak. We'll come up with something cool for that one. And then this is another small little small knife, <laughs> small style knife that I was working on. Um, it's just like a three finger kind of grip. And uh, it's just really small, lightweight, um, neck style or whatever, little utility knife, nice flat edge on it too. So I drew this one up and made a couple of them because I, I like the feel of it. So uh, what I think we're going to do for handle material for that one is uh, what I've got left over from some micarta that I tried to make myself. This stuff turned out okay. Uh, it wasn't flawless for sure, but for my first try, I was pretty happy with it. This stuff was actually just um, blue shop towel that I actually ripped into a bunch of little squares and stuffed it into a container, mixed it with a whole bunch of uh, epoxy resin, uh, fiberglass resin, and uh, this is kind of how it turned out. I have made one knife with this as a handle material, and uh, yeah, like I say, it worked out okay. There are a couple little air holes and stuff in there just because I think that comes with mixing up the epoxy resin um, all together into a bunch instead of just laying out sheets of it and laying it down flat but I, like I say it turned out kind of cool for the first try and uh, I think it's gonna look it'll work out pretty nice on this blade so let's get to that first steps are gonna be uh, cleaning these guys up they're black because they're covered with um, a, an oxidation that happens during the heat treating process so I'll uh, we're going to hit that on a belt real quick and then I'll hand sand it to a nice polish, mask it off so it doesn't get wrecked during the handling process and then we'll uh, cut out some handle material. So I cleaned these up uh, on the belt grinder. Um, those of you who have been following along have, uh, have known the saga of me trying to get my 2x72 belt grinder up and running. Um, truth of the matter is I did clean these ones up on my old 4x36 horizontal grinder and um, my thought process there is that when I originally ground the bevels on these knives it was on that horizontal plane and uh, because they're stainless I've got some money and I've got quite a bit of time already into these blades. Um, I didn't want to go and ruin the bevel on them trying using them to kind of learn how to use a vertical 2x72 belt grinder. So I thought, um, you know, for these ones, I did say that I'm not going to grind too much steel on my little grinder there, but for what I've already got in the works that's got a bevel ground on it already, I'm just going to uh, play it safe and uh, go with what I know, with what works so far. So I cleaned them up, and uh, I've got a, if the 4x36 goes up to 120 grit, for a belt um, and so then uh, by hand I go with a 500 and then I got a 220 and then uh, I'm gonna stop at a 320 for these knives because they are just kind of a utility knife I'm hoping it gets used like almost every day kind of thing so I'm not gonna get up into a 1200 grit or 2000 grit polished finish for these um, it's the 320 is a really nice satin clean satin finish and uh, yeah, like I say, I'm hoping these things get a little bit beat up anyway. So, so we'll get them up to 320. Um, right, the way I do mine, I've got a piece of two by four here clamped into my vise. The vise is rotated at a nice, uh, comfortable angle to the bench, 
so I can get on both sides of it fine. And then I just clamp uh, my knife at the tang down with a little clamp and it holds it really good. Because these are such short blades on these little knives, I mean, I'm only cleaning up back to about here because the handle is going to cover the rest. Um, it, it doesn't really make a big difference, but when you're working on like a six or seven or eight inch blade on a knife, having all that support under there makes a huge difference. So as you're sanding it, you're not bending it. And uh, cause you put quite a bit of pressure trying to get the most bang out of your buck for each, each swipe of the hand sandpaper. But um, so this is, this is just a real simple setup that works really good. And, uh, and so I'll go at that for uh, as long as it takes to get these guys nice and polished out. Keep working out uh, all the all the lines from the previous higher grit or sorry previous lower grit sandpaper until uh, I get the finish I'm after. Whew. Cooled right off here. We got a storm moving through, so the wind really picked up and it cooled off. So I had my sweater on there for a little bit, but it doesn't take too long to warm up. Sanding blades by hand, I'll tell you that much. So the reason I put these, I clean them up first on the on the power sander, is because uh, when I generally when I cut out these blades and I grind the bevels, um, on my blades and my high carbon blades that I heat treat myself, I notice that um, you got to leave a little bit on the edge. You can't grind it to uh, right to a fine point when you're right before heat treating because it'll burn off um, if it's right sharp. So you leave like a half a mil or something, just a little bit on the edge um, just to keep it true during heat treating. It helps keep it from warping too much too. I've recently found out that with stainless, you don't necessarily need to do that, but I did anyway. And I'm not gonna try to hand sand that bevel down to flat on a, on a hardened stainless steel blade. So um, put it on the power grinder and I can get the bevels right down to the point where I can sharpen it up on a stone when all said and done. That's like my last step. Good safety tip. Don't sharpen your knife until everything else is done. I've uh, I learned that one the hard way, making a sheath. Don't sharpen your knife before you make a sheath. So I know there's going to be some questions, uh, or someone's going to have some question about this chisel grind. Um, it's just a, it's just another different grind, you know, like a Scandi grind versus a hollow ground versus, you know, this or that, or a full flat grind. Um, it's just another option and, uh, it's got its purpose, uh, mainly for, you know, certain carving tasks. Uh, it's going to act like any regular blade if you're cutting through cordage or, or any type of material or whatever, a pair of scissors. I don't know if you can hear it, but the thunder's coming in now. A pair of scissors are just uh, two flat ground, uh, or sorry, two chisel grinds working against each other. So they still cut just perfectly fine, but it's just uh, it's just something different and kind of novel as well. But here, I've got this one um, totally hand polished, and so I'm just masking it off. I'll give you a better shot of this in a second. So this is a little something that I've uh, kind of developed recently. I'm not sure how everybody else masks off their blades, but basically once you get this thing to a nice polish, you don't want uh, to risk any type of scratch happening on there while you're putting the handle on. But um, what I've found lately is I'll mask way too far up the tang of the blade um, for the, the handle of this one's going to come out somewhere out here. So I'll mask in way too deep. And then um, I'll carve off some of the tape in here and in here just along the actual tang cover up both sides and yeah like you can see i'm almost at the the pinhole there so that's clearly way too far but that's nice and protected and you know you take pretty good care of them so you're not gonna the plastic or the tape's not gonna protect it a lot but for the amount of abuse this should get it should be pretty safe at this point so then i'll take a little knife and just along the tang, cut up, you know, a little bit farther than I'm planning on going with the handle. And that just gives me um, a nice edge to trace with when I put this on top of, it won't be this, but a type of handle material. It just gives me a nice clean edge to trace out my line so I'm not running into a bunch of tape because I've taped so far. 
And, uh, and the reason I do that, I'll show you in a little bit when we go to put the scales on. So I'm just working on the, uh, the other knife here and I just thought I'd point out that um, I'm sanding, I'm cleaning up the blade a little bit farther onto the tang than I know where the handle is going to be so that I do get that finish the entire blade it doesn't stop somewhere before the handle obviously but for the rest of the tang I'm, I'm leaving it really rough um, I clean up just to get the uh, just to get the scaling off of it because the scaling is a form of rust so I get as much of the scaling off as I can with a really rough belt on the, the power grinder like an 80 grit and then I leave it at that because I want there to be as much tooth there for the glue later on to have it something to bite to I won't want like a 320 grit polish all the way across the tang otherwise um, your glue's not going to have anything to hold on to all right so that's both blades cleaned up and polished and masked off now uh, we know what material we want to put on this one let's pick out some uh, cool handle material for this little guy all right so we know for this guy i want to go with uh, my leftover a little bit of micarta the blue micarta i think it's going to look pretty cool on there um, so that one's done that's easy this guy I think I picked out some of this stuff I'm not exactly sure what this is but it's oily and it's hard and it's gorgeous I think it might be a type of coca bolo uh, or, or some kind of desert ironwood or something like that um, but it's great now I've been saving this piece because it's very thin um, and most of my knife handles I like to give, give a nice I start out with about a half inch thick per side plus the tang in the middle and then I work down depending on the, the the handle and the application but this piece I didn't want to get rid of obviously because it's a, it's great but I've been saving it for something where I can get away with a nice thin profile and this uh, this knife definitely calls for a pretty thin handle to also to maybe uh, to maybe help it out I've got some of these guys these are spacer material or liners and they're just a thin piece of uh, flexible I honestly don't know what they're made of, but it's kind of a, a rough textured plastic. Shapes really nice, works really great with handles, and it comes in a variety of colors. I might even throw a little bit of white in with this stuff, just to kind of highlight along the tang. Generally you'd go uh, tang of the knife, and then the spacer material, and then your handle material, like this. On either side and it turns out really nice I've done a couple of them um, and, it, and it works out really good some guys are even would even like cut make a slice halfway through the handle and put uh, some liner materials in there uh, I might dabble with some of that in the future but that's the gist so with this guy obviously black might look nice in between those like this uh, it just give it kind of a shadow sort of make the tang just look a little bit bigger but also help bring out some of the green aesthetically in that wood um, the red would be kind of clashy white's kind of white might be nice might be kind of a tacky look though mm, might turn out nice and yellow I don't know I was kind of on the fence about getting the yellow just because a lot of my handle material plus yellow equals kind of tacky sort of iffy but well, you know a little bit of highlight in there along with the red just that little sliver might turn out nice I wish you could give me your opinion in time for me to make this decision but you know what I might go yellow Hmm. We'll see. I'll get the other one cleaned up. I got to uh, sort of plane this down a little bit just to get a nice flat smooth surface. Same with the blue stuff. So I'll do that and I'll really think hard about it. Safety tip. When working with any kind of micarta, remember that it is essentially just fiberglass. So wear breathing protection. Uh, same goes with any kind of fiberglass if you're repairing your canoe or whatever. It's super toxic and the particles are extremely fine so uh protect yourself 
The blue looks deadly with the, the white liners, so that's a given. That one's real easy. This other little necker with whatever this red wood is, we'll call it Cocobolo. Let's just go with that. Um, I keep going back to this yellow with the yellow liner for some reason. Since I picked it up and said it looked really tacky, uh, I keep going back to it and sold. I'm going for it. We're going to do it. So there we go. Next step will be to trace out the tang onto uh, both the liners and the handle material. Cut him out. When you're tracing out, you got to remember to flip over and do one on each side so that you have the, that same nice smooth surface on either side of your tang. Space material doesn't matter, it's the same either way, but the wood and the fiberglass resin uh, I'm going to cut out with uh, the bandsaw. But um, with this stuff I find you can just cut it out with regular scissors. I'm not going to get too finicky about cutting out all the little details. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room anyways. Um, just just for safety's sake, but uh, I might get a little bit close with some of this stuff, but I might just go straight down Sorry, you're not even on the screen. I might just cut straight down there um, Just in just it doesn't matter. It's gonna come out with a grinder later, so Just like arts and crafts There we go now, as you can see, the only part that I've really paid any attention to is right at the front here on all four of these cuts and the same when I cut out the wood and the fiberglass. I'm just going to make sure that I get really close there. Uh, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you've seen lots of other knife making videos and they're all right. Everybody else does it the same way. You have to finish the very front there or anywhere else where the steel is going to protrude out from, uh, from underneath your handle material. Say I wasn't going to put any handle material, if I was going to stop it back here, then whatever material you're putting on, you have to finish that surface right up here at the front. You have to finish that before you glue this up because once it's on there, you can't get in there and finish that material. It's going to be a lot more obvious when it's something thicker. When it's on there like this, you can't get in there and finish if it's all rough or if it doesn't line up with the other side, once it's glued on to your knife, you're hooped. So we do this first, like everybody else, there's a reason for it. There we go, a bunch of puzzle pieces. Cut these out with my, uh, with my bandsaw. Uh, I didn't film it, but it wasn't very exciting. You didn't miss much. So the next thing to do now is we take a piece from each and we're gonna line things up like so make sure we're not missing anywhere we're gonna hit everybody on every little uh, every edge and then we drill some holes so here's where um, one of the ways my methods are going to uh, vary a little bit from how other guys do this um, I clamp mine up with my vise to make sure that everything stays exactly where I want it and then I drill through it really carefully with a hand drill I'm pretty good with the drill I'm not perfect uh, I'm certainly not as good as a, a drill press would be, but um, I can't figure out a way to clamp it all together uh, in a really quick method or a qu really quick um, manner so that I can squish it together, drill it, flip it over, put the rest of my material on using uh, using the original holes now as my, my template and then drilling it again with it all clamped together. This is a pretty quick system. I can get it out of there, I can manipulate it, I can get it back in, everything's nice and lined up, and uh, and I can drill the holes through. Particularly since this is such thin handle material, um, it's pretty easy to get a straight hole over whatever we got here, 5 eighths of an inch, if that, half an inch maybe. Um, but I do have some an idea in mind for uh, a clamping system that's maneuverable at the same time underneath the drill press. So. Uh, if I get that figured out, I'll make a video about it. But for now, this has been working for me so far, so away we go. After I've drilled through 
all the handle material here. Right before I unclamp it, I find this is a great time to measure out my pin material. Alright, so now that we got some holes drilled in there, alignment doesn't matter anymore, so we can get rid of this guy for now. And I'll keep all these pieces in order. And then I've got these two, which are uh, a couple of pieces of pin material that I've just uh, ground some tapers on. And I just use them for alignment. So I'll push these through both holes, through all of my materials, and that'll uh, make everything lined up as if the tang was in there and the pins were being set. All right, so those are in there nice and tight. There's no movement. And so now this is very... The very front of the tang here where the tang comes out turns into the blade so as you can see everything's kind of pretty rough because I was just sort of eyeballing it as I went because I knew this next step was coming up put the pins in there everything's lined up so now I can grind that down on a belt sander or a, or a belt grinder or whatever you've got to clean that up and and then you want to hand sand it as far as you want your uh, finish to go on your final product because like I say once it's on there and that's squeezed in between all of that you can't get at this surface so this is the time to do it so now comes the reason for all this extra tape I got my alignment pins in so I slam it up nice and tight so that's exactly where the, uh, the scale is gonna live and now right along here I can take my knife and just carefully score the tape one time and then I'll be able to peel that off. And what's left is exactly where the scale is going to line up. And so everything's protected that it needs to be. Everything's exposed that it needs to be. So if I have any squeeze out with my glue, it's much easier to clean up. Uh, any type of uh, shaping the handle or hand sanding, I've got my, my blade is all nice and protected for that. It seems to work really well. Up here, this is where I've got that 320 polish, so I'm going to go over this with some sandpaper, rough this all up, but I don't have to worry about roughing up the exposed part of the blade, because it'll be protected as long as I'm nice and careful. And yeah, it's uh, the system seems to be working for me really well, so take that and do what you will with it. Alright, more ways that uh, every knife maker is different. Some guys would like to uh, glue up all of their handle materials together and make single solid billets and work from them. Um, so they would take their liner material, glue it to their handle material, and then go through the whole process of shaping and cutting out and drilling and all that stuff as one solid piece. Probably a great idea. Um, personally, I don't plan that far ahead. So the day that I'm going to uh, glue up my handles or the day that I pick my materials, generally, uh, if I was going to cut my materials uh, across the long axis this way and uh, and blend in a couple other materials, then I could see that being a huge benefit, gluing it all together initially, grinding it all nice and flat, and starting as if it's just one solid piece, for sure. Next comes gluing up. Um, lately, I've been gluing my handles a little differently than I used to. I would... Um, stick my pins through one side of my scale like this one and uh, and just kind of work everything together it's difficult to describe now I'm sticking them through the back side and uh, I'll glue through there and then I'll kind of work from one side to the other like a sandwich start with the bottom slice and work up clamp it together a word on glues uh, there's lots of different glues out there a lot of knife makers are using, uh, a lot of two-part epoxies, and uh, there's a new one out, uh, I can't think of the name of it right now, everyone seems to be liking it a lot, I haven't tried it yet, so maybe it's better that I don't mention the name until I try it, but I've been using Gorilla Glue, it's been holding up really great, it's single, uh, it's, it's a one part, so there's no mixing, I've done some two-part epoxies, and mixing it up is fine. I find I end up with just a lot of waste that way. This way it comes out of the bottle as much as you need, spread it on there, clamp it up, away you go. So I really like that. It also uh, it foams up quite a bit. There's even a little, little where it's spilled down the lid here. And you can see it just kind of, this, this would be a very small amount and then it foams up so it fills a lot of gaps. So if you're working with a very porous material, that's great because it spreads itself out inside of your bond, fills a lot of gaps and it's been holding up really well 
Uh, it's it's a pain in the ass to take apart for sure. It's 100% waterproof. Can't go wrong. Also, the way that I do my masking helps a lot because it foams out quite a bit onto my masking material. Before I came up with this method, it was a lot of trouble kind of cleaning off uh, the steel where it's outside of the handle material there um, without scratching up your finish. So this way it's much easier. Uh, the, the glue comes off with the tape. Too easy. So this procedure I believe I've filmed in the past. I think I probably uploaded it onto the tube. But uh, yeah, we'll do it again just in case you missed anything the first time or in case I'm completely out to lunch and I never did film this. So here we go. I like to do, uh, I like to work on these blue shop towels and as you can see I reuse them because they cost money. Maybe not a lot of money but my pins, my pins I cut out of that long stock that you saw before and then I take them to my bench grinder and I just uh, clean the burrs off of one side but the other side I put a tiny chamfer on uh, just to help it push through the material and also uh, to avoid blowout when I tap it through on the other side and this is this pin is coming out of that material uh, with some woods it'll have a tendency to kind of chip that out and if uh, I'm not working with very much thickness then I don't want to want to avoid that as much as I can so here we go I may not talk a lot while this is happening because I try to do it quickly and concentrate a little bit if I concentrate at all during this process, this is when I do it. Little dab of glue. I find my chamfered side. Send it in the hole. I drill out my holes um, with an eighth inch drill bit because these are eighth inch pins. Tiny little ball peen hammer. One falls down, perfect. That only happens when you're filming. Gentle tap, and then I take it over to my vise where I've left a little space. Make sure you can still see. Oh yeah, you can see. Give it a little tap just to give myself a little something to work with on the other side here. More glue. Now this Gorilla Glue, uh, if you're looking for a quick bond, you can moisten both surfaces that you're working with. It'll make it foam up a little quicker. But I'm looking for as much uh, working time as possible generally with this stuff. Liner. If I'm not using liners, I find I tend to glue up both sides I'll glue the handle material and I'll glue the steel um, but for some reason when I'm doing this I find I just glue one side and I over glue it quite a bit I put lots on there so it definitely bonds quite a bit and I'm not shy with it that's for sure you probably can't see what I'm doing it's not that interesting anyways it's just spreading glue Tap, tap, everything's lined up. Again, back to here. Protruding a little bit, perfect. Perfecter. Yeah, it's just like a sandwich. A little bit of mayo, slice of lettuce. mustard and 
now I'm going to tap these as far as I can down just to get that chamfered section of the pins out as far as I can just in case I'm not going to work this handle material down I don't want to be left with a little bit of chamfer in there and there will be a void around the pin. I do try to keep the glue off my hand as much as I can. Alrighty, then we clamp. Now there's a tendency to just crank down on your clamps because it feels really good to do so. Oh, my clamps are broken. Don't tell anyone. But if the harder you squeeze your clamps together, the more glue you squeeze out of your joint. And a dry joint is a very weak joint, so just enough to make sure you don't have any gaps happening nice and squeeze nice together this is how I like to clamp them so that I can stand up after like that clamp the rest of it and then any squeeze out just kind of leaks down the tang instead of if you leave them kind of sitting like this or whatever then it leaks and drips down onto your clamp that's nice and clean and easy so let me clamp some more These little left clamps are really handy because they're super adjustable and you can get quite a bit of torque down on them if you need to. Next I try to make sure I get right up at the front of the handle there because I don't want any gap happening there for sure. And then I'll throw one in the middle. C clamps I like as well except you have to be careful with them because they put a ton of pressure on what you're clamping without you really realizing it. So again if you're working with a thin material that you're not going to take much off of later it's not a bad idea to maybe put a little piece of a little block of wood on either side so you're not indenting if you're working with any soft woods. You don't want to indent your finished product at all. A little squeeze just to make sure everybody's happy. Boom! One knife. There you have a pair of knives all clamped up. I leave them overnight to cure and uh, by morning they'll be ready to shape the handles. So there you go. Thanks for, uh, thanks for following along with me on how I put handles on knives. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I think for the rest of my day here I'm gonna try to wire up the engine for this little guy but I've got a video series happening on that already so you have to catch up with it over there but for now for this video I think that's it so uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time